Hey guys, it's Becky. Welcome back to my channel. If you're already subscribed to me, if you're new, hey, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you'll subscribe and become part of my YouTube channel family. Today I have a video that I have not talked about anything home related really on my channel in a while just because I've been focusing a lot on homeschooling. But if you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, you should. It's a place to nest Becky on Instagram. But if you follow me on Instagram, I mentioned, I think back in July, that we are in the middle of a kitchen remodel basically all that was brought on by water damage we knew we had water damage um, from a dishwasher that had leaked but we had no clue the extent of the water damage and really what was going to come after that like how many things we ended up changing but because we did have to replace two cabinets drywall and insulation behind where the water had been leaking we decided to go ahead and take this opportunity to redo our kitchen it's something i've wanted to do since we moved in even though the house was new when we moved in, I didn't like the way that it was. I think it was too dark and it was certainly not colors that I would have picked. We've lived here 13 years now and I just never did it. I never did anything with it because I thought there's nothing wrong with it. It's functional and just because I don't like the way it looks, there's no reason necessarily to spend all that money on it. But we did decide to go ahead and do a complete kitchen remodel just because we already had to fix so many things because of the water. So why not go ahead and give it the update that we've been wanting to do all this time. There are so many things that I learned in this process, so many mistakes that were made. Um, and of course, I'm not a professional. We are laughingly, like hysterically, not even close to being professional. We're not very good at DIY things. We're just not very crafty or handy around the house, me or my husband, either one. Um, but there are quite a few things that we learned and I'm going to be sharing that with you guys today. So if you are planning to do any type of kitchen improvements, kitchen remodeling, definitely watch this video before you do. And of course, there's a ton more things I could mention. These are just kind of the eight things that really stuck out to me the most that I learned or realized I was glad that I knew before we started our kitchen remodel. If you're going to be doing any of the work yourself, make sure that you have a wet dry vacuum, especially if you can get one with HEPA, a HEPA filter, that would be even better. If you are dealing with drywall dust or any type of debris, you do not want to be sucking that up with your vacuum that you use in your house. Having the HEPA filter is also extra beneficial. That way you are minimizing the amount of dust that is blowing back out into the room when you suck it up. It really does help to have a HEPA filter on your wet dry vac, but even if it doesn't have one, I highly recommend that you get a wet dry vac. I actually burned up my home vacuum by trying to vacuum up too much drywall dust. So definitely invest in a wet dry vac or rent one. Second thing is, this is very important. If you're gonna be doing a kitchen remodel, you're probably not gonna have access to water. You're probably not gonna have access to your stove, your maybe even your refrigerator. I did my best to meal plan and, and set aside any ingredients that I was gonna need because I had to pack everything away in boxes. So I didn't wanna have to be like scrambling around looking for you know diced tomatoes or chili pepper or whatever. So I made my meal plan and then I, I um, set aside those ingredients that I knew I was gonna need so that I wouldn't pack them away in a place where I couldn't get to them. We also set up a dishwashing station in the bathtub upstairs because we didn't have water in the kitchen for about a week. So we had to wash dishes upstairs in the bathtub. So I got a big gray tote, I washed it out really well. And then we used that to wash the dishes in, in the tub. And then I rinsed them off. We laid them out on towels and dried them off and then put them back downstairs. But having a dishwashing station somewhere with access to water where you have room to wash the dishes is really helpful. Something else I think is really helpful, whether you're remodeling a kitchen or any project around your house is to make a punch list. If you ever bought a house that was new, you know that your contractor will tell you they want you to go around the house and make what is called a punch list. Everything you see that's wrong in the house that needs to be fixed, you're supposed to make that list. Same thing with any home projects. I make a punch list for any project that I do. If it's like a DIY project or I'm doing a deep cleaning of a certain room, I have a punch list for every project that I'm doing. So what I do is sit down and make a list of every single thing that needs to be done, purchased, researched, or anything like that regarding this project on one sheet of paper. Just type it all out, write it all out, get it out of your brain. And then you can go back and like organize it by, well, this has to be done before this, and this has to be done before this. I think for this whole process, that was one of the hardest things for me was without having a contractor and like doing all this ourselves, trying to coordinate like the plumber with the flooring guy, with the electrician, with the drywall, you know, all of that stuff that has to kind of fit into a certain order. That was the hardest thing. So having a punch list and putting everything in order of importance or priority is really, really helpful, especially when there's so many things to be done 
it really can help you to not get as overwhelmed. So also if you're doing any type of kitchen project and you know you're gonna be doing one, then I would recommend to declutter and eat as much of your food as possible before you start your project. So if you have cabinets and cabinets full of junk and you have to unpack everything, and you're gonna be putting things back, it, it makes more sense to go ahead and declutter and get rid of things that you don't want to keep before you start your project. That way you're not having to pack away extra stuff that you don't even intend to keep, and then you're also not having to deal with it again when it's time to unpack all that stuff and put it back. You don't have a bunch of stuff that you don't even wanna keep or that you don't even use to put back into the cabinet. You've already gotten rid of all that stuff. Same thing with the food. If you're gonna be packing up food to clear out cabinets and things, it's really a good idea to go ahead and you know finish whatever macaroni and cheese you've been hanging on to for six months or any canned foods that you really need to go through. The more you can eat of what you've already got is less stuff that you have to move back and forth when you're working on your project. Speaking of putting things back in the cabinets, you will be surprised how you think you remember how you had things in a cabinet or a drawer and then you take everything out and you go to put it back and you're like, wait a minute, where did I have all this stuff? So one thing I did was I took pictures of all of my cabinets, like after I decluttered and I figured out like this is only the stuff I wanna keep, I took pictures of all of my cabinets and all of my drawers so that when I go to put things back in those cabinets and drawers, I remember where things were. And I made little tweaks here and there, but still overall I knew, okay, all the plates were on the bottom left and all the bowls were on the bottom right and things like that. It really does make it a lot easier to put things back when you can see where they came from. And when it comes to budgeting for a kitchen remodel or any home improvement project, there's always, 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 always going to be things that you did not remember to plan for or things that went wrong that you have to add to your current renovation budget. And that's definitely the case with us. We had to pay an electrician almost an extra $500 that we had not planned on paying him because of something that went on. We had to do some other things that cost extra money that we hadn't planned for. So try your best to think of every little thing that could possibly be something you have to buy right down to knobs for new cabinet hardware to budget in for the drawer liners and things like that and also i would recommend having a kind of miscellaneous little category so that you have some extra money set aside that maybe you don't know yet what you're going to need it for but you have a buffer that way if you do have to have a plumber come twice or you have to pay an electrician for something you weren't planning on having or you didn't count enough uh, you didn't budget enough for you know light bulbs and you've got to go get more light bulbs having a little extra kind of miscellaneous buffer category in your budget will really help you to not go too crazy over budget if you've got that little air that little bit of money that is set aside for any last minute things the last thing i'm going to share with you guys that we learned the hard way this is for people who had a um, an above mount sink and then are going to be going to an under mount sink like we did because we had laminate like cheap laminate countertops and we had a stainless steel sink that was above mount when we went and got our granite countertops we wanted the under mount sink so there's nothing like hanging over the top of the granite that's great and perfect and trendy and beautiful and all but we didn't realize that because the sink is deeper and also hung uh, mounted underneath the countertop all of our plumbing didn't fit right. When the plumbers came to, to install the new disposal, we actually couldn't get a disposal, a garbage disposal, because um, it was making the pipes hang the wrong direction and all of the pipes were gonna be going backwards if they mounted it so that the disposal would fit. So last minute, I had to run out to the store and get different drain baskets for the sink and we just took the disposal back because other than knocking out the wall that we had just put back in, to adjust the size of the plumbing pipes, there was no way for them to make that new disposal work with the size pipes that we currently had and were using before. So little things like that that you don't take into consideration and it didn't occur to me to call a plumber and say, hey, I'm going from an above mount sink to a below mount sink, am I gonna have to have you come and fix these pipes so that my disposal will fit? That never occurred to me and I certainly wasn't gonna let them bust out the wall that we had just literally put back in so I have no disposal now. It's not the end of the world. I'm not that upset. I'm not that upset about it because our old disposal really didn't work that well anyway. So I was kind of used to not having one, but it was still kind of disappointing because I did I did want one and it would have been nice to have a new one and have it actually, you know, work where my other one didn't work that well. But it was just something we learned the hard way that sometimes these little things like that really you don't realize or think about until it's too late. So keep that in mind if you're planning on going from an above mount to a below mount. That may be an issue that you will have and run into, so you may wanna have a plumber come out first and look, and I wish I had done that at the time. I would have realized then that, um, you know, we need to have them do something behind the wall before we put the new drywall back up. So 
not the biggest deal in the world, but just something for you guys to think about. So it's definitely been a process with this whole kitchen remodel. It's taken way longer than I thought it would. I definitely underestimated the amount of time that it took to get everything done, especially because we did a lot of the stuff ourselves and then we did have some people pay, I had to pay some people to do the floor and to paint the cabinets, but even that took a couple days. You're working around someone else's schedule. We also have, are actually currently having, as I film this, we're having a delay with the flooring to finish up the project. So, um, you know, things take longer, people take longer to do things than you think they will. Things take longer sometimes to get delivered than you think they will. So it's definitely been a challenge, but I'm so glad that it is almost done. I mean, it'll be done by the time you guys see this probably, but I'm so glad that it's almost done. It's definitely been stressful because I am the type of person that's very overwhelmed and stressed out by messes and visual clutter. And especially because I work from home, I'm a stay at home mom and we homeschool. It's definitely been a challenge trying to do all those things at home while all of this other mess has been going on. So. I, it's, it's been a, it's been an issue, but I'm glad now that it's done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Please stay tuned. It's coming up very soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are planning a kitchen remodel, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have done any remodeling projects in your own home, please feel free to leave in the comments any tips and suggestions you have, because like I said, a lot of us try to do things on our own and we have no clue really what we're doing. And it would really be helpful to me and I'm sure lots of other people if you have any experience of things you've learned during projects and DIYs, please share it with us in the comments so we can all learn from you guys as well. So hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe before you head out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.